Hello, I'm Chef Ian Bromstead, and welcome to Regal Fair, where I'll show you how to create simple and elegant meals just like we do at some of the finest restaurants in this country. First, we're going to make some roasted king trumpet mushrooms with a little fonduta and mash. Then we'll make a little cavatelli with some zucchini and parmesan. And then we'll have some profiteroles with a little chocolate sauce and gelato for dessert. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna get started roasting our mushrooms. So to make our roasted king trumpet mushrooms, I'm going to make just a little bit of fonduta. So I'm gonna take about a cup and a half of heavy cream, and we're just gonna to start to reduce this. We can bring this over high heat. We just wanna be careful to make sure that the cream doesn't boil over. When we're reducing cream, it has a pretty strong tendency to boil over the side of the pot. So we'll just make sure we keep a very close eye on that. So now that we have our cream reducing, we can start to roast these beautiful king trumpet mushrooms that we have. I have just a little bit of extra virgin olive oil here that we can start them in. And once this oil comes up to a nice shimmer, we can start to get our mushrooms in. So all I did to these uh, king trumpet mushrooms was I just peeled um, the outside uh, of the stem. Uh, I split them in half and then I, uh, you can see I put some little score marks in there. That's going to help them uh, sear and it's going to get a nice surface contact so we'll get a nice golden brown on the cut side of the mushroom. So we can just place these mushrooms right down in the oil and just begin to roast. Let's get all these in here nice and neatly. So we're roasting our mushrooms. It's looking nice. Our cream is reducing. So we just want to get a nice golden brown on these king trumpet mushrooms. So we'll just roast them nice and slowly. Just want to make sure we can press against the, the back of the mushroom to make sure that the, the cut side of the mushroom stays nice and flat with the pan so we have nice surface contact. They'll tend to curl up just a little bit if we go too hot. Um, so we'll just want to make sure that we feel the backs and make sure that they're all pressed firmly against the, the bottom of the pan. That way we'll uh, get a nice golden brown. And as we're roasting, these mushrooms will take a little, uh, take a little, they'll suck up a little bit of the olive oil. So if we need to add a little more, we can. You can see the cream is starting to boil up quite a bit. It's nice, nice reducing. Continuing to stir helps. Let's bring this down nice and quickly. Getting a nice, beautiful golden brown here. You can slow these down just a little bit. Start to take a look at the other ones. We can see we're getting a beautiful golden brown here. It's just what we want. So now that we have a beautiful golden brown on all these mushrooms, I'm just gonna season these mushrooms with just a little bit of kosher salt. We can see that our cream is starting to get just a little bit of body. We can see that the cream is becoming a little nappe. We're able to see the pan, the bottom of the pan, when we whisk it across the spoon. That means we're getting a nice thickness. It's a little bit, a little bit further here on the cream. And now, now that our mushrooms are just about cooked, I'm just gonna add just a little bit of whole butter here to this pan. This will help cook them through. The steam from the butter really help the mushrooms just finish cooking. Spoon some of this delicious butter over the, over the mushrooms, keep them nice and moist. And our cream is just about there. So we can turn the heat on our cream off. Our mushrooms are just about there. And our cream is a nice, beautiful, thick consistency. So now that our cream is completely reduced, um, I'm gonna take just a little bit of this Fontina cheese. This is some Fontina Val d'Aosta. It's an Italian uh, aged Fontina. It's got a really, really nice flavor. Um, not too strong, but a really, really present cheese flavor. So I'm just gonna whisk just a little bit of this cheese into the nice warm cream, nice and gently. We can go ahead and we can season our mushrooms with just a little bit of ground black pepper. 
continue to whisk the cheese into our fonduta. Beautifully rich, creamy fonduta. It's gonna taste really great with the mushrooms. So we can add just a little bit of plain water here. Fontina's making it just a little on the thick side. Just thin it out just a, just a little bit. Just another kiss of water. So now that our fonduta is basically completed, I'm gonna take just a little bit of white truffle oil and I'm gonna drizzle this into the fonduta. Immediately the uh, heat is making the uh, white truffle oil really give an amazing, amazing aroma. I really love the flavor of the white truffle oil on this, the cheesy, the, the earthiness of the mushrooms. So now that we have our mushrooms roasted and our fonduta completed, we can go ahead and we can start to plate. So I'm just gonna take a nice, nice generous amount of this fonduta, this beautifully creamy fonduta. And I'm gonna just put a little on this plate here. So now that we have our fonduta on, I'm just gonna take our roasted mushrooms. I'm just gonna lay them on top of the fonduta. Big, beautifully roasted mushrooms. I really like the king trumpets. Um, there's a lot of other mushrooms we can use for this. I really love like chanterelles are really great or a, a mix of mushrooms is even great too. I love chanterelles and black trumpets and uh, hen of the woods are also really excellent. Really, really nice mushrooms. And a lot of these are becoming much more available these days as the demand is increasing. So I have a few hazelnuts here. Um, I just toasted the hazelnuts and cut them in half. Um, I really like the textural crunch that the uh, hazelnuts bring to this dish. And you know, they're very, very rich and they go very well with, the, with all these flavors here. So now that we have our mushrooms and fonduta complete, I'm just gonna take a few pieces of this, of uh, these little bunches of mosh, and I'm just gonna lay these around. I really love the freshness that the, the mosh brings to, the, to this dish, because we have all the richness of the fonduta and the earthiness of the mushrooms. I really like to have something like nice and fresh here. So here we have our roasted king trumpet mushrooms with fonduta and mosh. We're gonna get this cleaned up, and we'll be right back to make our profiteroles. Welcome back. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna make our profiteroles now. So I'm just gonna take a half a cup of milk, and I'm just gonna bring it up to a scald. We just want the milk to be nice and warm. I'm gonna add a quarter of a cup of whole butter here. So we can just melt these two together. We just wanna stir as we, as we go. We just wanna make sure that the milk doesn't scorch on the bottom. We wanna make sure that the butter doesn't get too hot. So we just wanna melt these two together nice and gently. So, Basically what we're gonna do here is we're gonna take all this milk and butter and we're gonna add quite a bit of flour. And what's gonna happen is we're gonna get a nice uh, Play-Doh-like dough forming in the pan. And we're gonna cook that for just a little while just to cook a little bit of the excess moisture out. And then we're gonna fold in a couple eggs and then we're gonna transfer it right to our pastry bag here. And then we can pipe them all out onto this sheet tray here. And once we have them all piped onto a sheet tray, we're gonna bake them in a pretty hot oven, around 400 degrees. The idea is that the moisture that exists in this dough is gonna create a, a, a sort of an explosion of steam inside of the profiterole. And what'll happen is the uh, profiterole will puff up, uh, very similar to like a cream puff. And the puffing action is what happens when they go into the oven because this nice moist batter just kind of explodes inside the oven and creates this nice light profiterole. So now that our milk and butter are thoroughly melted, nice and warm, we can go ahead and we can add our flour. So now that we have all of our flour in, we can just mix these two nice and carefully. So now that they've come together nicely, we can put this back on the heat and we're gonna cook this for just a little while. Um, we want to cook this on the heat for about a minute. It gives the flour a chance to cook and it helps some of the moisture come out of this. Uh, we want a really nice delicate balance. We want it to be nice and stiff, but we don't want it to be too dry and we don't want it to be too wet. So if they're a little wet, they'll be, they won't puff up very nicely. So a nice stiff, nice stiff flour mix of 
flour, butter, and egg, or flour, butter, and milk. So now that <clears throat> our pastry dough is cooked just a little bit here, I'm going to pull this off the heat. Continue to stir it, let a little bit of the heat dissipate, but we want to have this batter stay pretty warm throughout the whole process. It'll make piping it out a lot easier. Uh, so now that we have our flour, milk, and butter cooked, I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to add one egg. And I'm just going to mix this in. Uh, I like to add the eggs one at a time. It's just, it's just a little easier. Um, it has a tendency to be a little difficult when you try and add a large volume of eggs to this batter. So now that we have one egg in, we can add our second egg. And we can just fold this last egg in. So now that our pastry dough is almost complete here, this is a very classic uh, French pastry called choux pastry, pâté à choux. Delicious for profiteroles, eclairs, cream puffs. So now that we have our finished pâté à choux, choux pastry, we can transfer this to this pastry bag. We can then take our pastry bag of nice warm choux pastry. And we can just squeeze this right down to the bottom. And I'm going to take our shoe tray and I'm just going to pipe out little, little balls. Nice little balls. It's warm. It's a little difficult to hold the bag, but the colder the dough gets, the harder it's going to be to work with. So I do kind of, I do like to pipe these out when the dough is still pretty warm. Just continue to move your hands. Not too bad. So we can, now that we have all of our shoes piped out here, we can just take just a little bit of plain water and with like a wet finger, we're just gonna pat these down just to make sure that they have a nice smooth top. Be nice when they bake. Nice smooth rounded top to our profiteroles. So now that we have all of our profiteroles piped onto our sheet tray, I'm just going to pop these into a 400 degree oven for about 20 or 25 minutes, just until they're golden brown. We're going to get this cleaned up and we'll be right back to make our cavatelli. Welcome back. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to get started making our cavatelli now. So I'm going to take about a cup of double zero flour and I'm going to take about a cup of semolina flour. I really like to use both flours because it really makes for a nice texture to the dough. Um, you can substitute all-purpose flour for both of these, that's totally fine. So we're going to make just a little well in the center of the flours. And I'm going to add, uh, I think I'm going to add about a quarter of a cup of water, uh, but we can add it in, in stages so that we make sure that we have the right consistency. So I'm just going to start to bring the flour into this water until we have a nice, nice workable dough. We can already see a lot of these pieces of dough starting to form. Nice clumps, clumps of dough. You can add a little bit more water. I like to use warm water, kind of helps with the making of the dough. I think we're going to need just a little bit more plain water. The idea here is we just want to make a nice, nice stiff dough. We don't want it to be too loose, um, but we don't want it to be too hard that we can't work with it. So we'll just continue to mix the pasta a little bit, a little bit more here, a little bit more water. We just want just enough water, just until we can be able to bring this together into a, into a dough. So now that we're starting to be able to get most of this into the dough, I think this is going to be pretty good. I think we'll be able to work all the rest of this flour into the dough. I think there'll be just enough moisture here. So now that our cavatelli dough is just about ready, we're going to go ahead and we're going to transfer this to the work surface. So we can get our dough here and we've got a little bit of extra, extra dry licked stuff, but I think that we'll be all right. I think we'll be able to work all the rest of this dry ingredients in. So the idea here is we really just want to knead the dough. We're going to need about 10 or 15 minutes of kneading. The idea is that we want to just create a nice, sticky, firm, elastic dough. It's got a nice, smooth texture. So what the kneading is doing is actually it's developing the gluten strands inside of the pasta dough, which gives it that nice, toothsome mouthfeel that we like. 
So we're just gonna continue to knead this dough. It's a nice texture, it's nice and sticky, it's nice and firm, it's nice and hard. Um, so we can just continue to knead this dough just like this until we have a nice smooth ball. So now that we have a nice sticky dough, I'm gonna continue to knead this for about another five, another five or so minutes just until it has a real nice sticky elastic feel. Um, we can see that it's starting to break up a little bit. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead, I'm gonna knead this for another five or 10 minutes just until it's a nice firm, sticky elastic dough. Then we're gonna let it rest for another 10, 15 minutes and we'll come right back and we'll finish our cavatelli. So we let our pasta rest for about 10 or 15 minutes. We have a nice smooth and elastic dough. So we can go ahead and finish our pasta now. So I'm gonna take our cavatelli dough and I'm just going to take a little slice here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna roll it into a little log. And once we have a little log here, we have a nice little pasta log. So now that we have a nice little log, we can just slice this into some little diagonal shaped pieces. And now that we have a few of these little pieces made, we can take our little cavatelli board. This is just a little ridged piece of wood here. And we can just roll the little pieces of cavatelli dough along the, along the board. And what's gonna happen is we're gonna get these beautiful little ridges in the backs of the pasta. It's gonna be a nice place for all the sauce to sit. So here's how we finish our pasta. I've gone ahead and I made up a few more just to save a little time. So to make our pasta sauce, we can take a little bit of extra virgin olive oil and we can saute some of these beautiful green zucchinis. So we just wanna get just a little bit of color on the zucchinis. The idea is we just get a little bit of caramelization. It's gonna give a really, really delicious caramelized flavor, enhance some of the sweetness that's naturally in the zucchini. So we're just gonna get all these zucchinis just laid nice and evenly. We want a nice, a nice even layer of zucchinis along the bottom of the pan. We don't wanna crowd the pan too much because that'll prohibit it, that beautiful caramelization that we like so much. So now that we have all of our zucchinis in, we're just gonna let these cook. We just wanna let these get nice little golden brown. Really shouldn't take too long. About, about, a, minute, about a minute on each side. Turn this up a little bit. So this won't take too long. We don't really want to cook the uh, we don't really want to cook the zucchinis too much. We don't want to get them to get mushy. So just a little bit longer here. So now that we have all of our cavatellis ready, we just continue to cook our zucchinis. Just want to get a little golden brown. Don't want to go too much. Just, just a little bit of caramelization. It's a little longer here. You can see the, they're starting to absorb the oil. That means they're, they're getting cooked quite nicely. A little bit longer. We just want to get just a little bit of golden brown here. Just let these fry for just another 20, 30 seconds. Just get a nice little caramelization. Now we're starting to get beautiful little golden brown. You can start to turn all these. You can get in here. We can just get all these zucchinis flipped over so that we have a nice layer of the beautiful caramelized zucchinis here. And once we get all these zucchinis in here, we're just gonna take just a little bit of this red onion. We're just gonna put a nice even layer of the red onion right on top, just so the onion gets gently cooked. So now that all the zucchini is over, we can add a nice layer of these beautifully julienne red onions, just a little bit. And we can take some of these chopped San Marzano tomatoes. All I did with these is I just, um, I blanched them and then I peeled the skins away and then I crushed them with my hands and then just ran a knife through them just so they're not, not too, too big. So now that this is all cooking in here nicely, we can go ahead and we can drop our cavatellis. So we're gonna take all these cavatelli and drop them right in here. I just have a little bit of boiling salted water here. We can just add a little bit of cracked black pepper here. 
We can add just a little bit of kosher salt. We want to season these nicely. Just let this continue to cook. Beautiful braise of zucchini and tomato. Tart from the tomato, sweet from the red onion. It's gonna make a beautiful sauce for our cavatelli. So we don't need to cook these cavatelli for very long. We really just need to cook them just till they start to float. We have this beautiful braised zucchini in here. You can see the olive oil in here is starting to take on a little bit of green from the zucchini, a little bit of red from the tomato. It's really gonna make for a beautiful sauce. So now that we're getting close here, can bring our plate over. And now we can see all the cavatellis are just starting to come up to the top. They're just about ready. Just let them go for another 10 or 15 seconds just until they all come up. Our zucchini sauce is looking beautiful here. And now that all of our cavatelli have come up, we can get these out of here. Just get these right into the sauce. The last few out of here. So now that our cavatelli is just about ready, I'm just gonna add just a tiny bit of butter just to give it a little bit of creaminess, just kind of tie the sauce together. And just give it a little bit of that sweet sweetness from the butter. So now that we have all of our pasta sauce made and our cavatelli's in there, we can go ahead and get these all mixed together nicely. Got one little straggler in here. So now that our cavatelli is just about ready, I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna fold in just a little bit of chiffonade basil. I just cut this nice and big. I really like a nice big rustic cut on the basil. I really like nice big pieces in there. You can just get all this stirred right in. And here we have our cavatelli. So I'm just gonna take a nice generous portion here. Just get all these beautiful things in here, the beautiful little cavatellis, the beautifully caramelized little zucchinis, nice sweat little red onions. And one more zucchini on top. So now that we have our pasta in the dish, we can go ahead and grate just a little bit of Parmesan Reggiano on the pasta. I really love the flavor of the roasted zucchinis and this Parmesan. I think that they go really well together. So now that we have a nice, generous layer of the grated Parmesan cheese, we can take just a little bit of these breadcrumbs and just sprinkle all these over top. I really like the texture of the breadcrumbs. It gives it a nice, nice crunchy, crunchy element to the pasta. So here we have our zucchini with cavatelli and Parmesan. We're gonna get this cleaned up and we'll be right back to finish our profiteroles. So we're back. I'm just gonna finish up our profiteroles here. So I just took them out of the oven and I just let them cool slightly. So I just wanna split these all right in half, just with a little serrated knife. Makes it go nice and easily. So now that we have all of our profiteroles split in half, I'm just gonna take a little bit of this vanilla gelato and we're just gonna put a little little dollop right in each, each one. Nice little dollop of the ice cream in each one. Nice, I really like the flavor of the vanilla gelato. It really has a delicious creaminess that's gonna go really well with these creamy little profiteroles. So just one more little profiterole. Just one more. And now that we have all of our profiteroles filled, we can just put these right here on this plate. And I'm just gonna take just a little bit of this chocolate sauce. I just melted a little bit of dark chocolate with a little bit of heavy cream and a little sugar, just until it has a nice chocolate sauce consistency. So I'm just gonna take just a little bit of this chocolate sauce and just drizzle it all over, all over the profiteroles. Nice generous amount of the dark chocolate ganache here. Goes really well with the flavor of the vanilla gelato and the crunch of the profiteroles. I'm just gonna add a few little dollops of whipped cream, just for a little extra richness. Another little dollop here. And then we can add just a little bit of chopped pistachios. I really like the pistachios, or any nut is fine, just a little bit of textural crunch in there I really like. 
So here we have our finished profiteroles with vanilla gelato and chocolate sauce. We started today with our roasted king trumpet mushrooms with fonduta and mosh. And then we had our cavatelli with roasted zucchini and parmesan. I'm Chef Ian Bromstead, and I hope you enjoyed this episode of Regal Fair. We'll see you next time.